Looking to move up from his number 14 spot. Back in session number one, you may recall, John Force. Wow, what a shock, right? Number one qualifier. 388, the only one in the 80s so far. If you want to be in the quick half of the field, you're going to have to outrun Chad Green at 404. Blake Alexander, Jim Head, certainly capable of that. They made their season debut at Gainesville, our last stop on tour, and made a pretty big splash, no pun intended, at a race that got over 10 inches of rain over the course of the week, taking it all the way to the final round. And I do believe... Everybody not named Tony Stewart was probably pulling for him in that final round. Yeah, absolutely. So emotional. You had both sides of the racetrack. You had the whole Tony Stewart first win, but also Dickie Venables trying to get a win after losing his dad. You had Matt Hagen, had a good friend who had passed away. It was just super emotional, and they both shared a moment on the top end of the racetrack. We all want to see Jim Head win, period. We want to see Blake win, period. But with the Dylan Cromwell tribute, boy, that will be special. Well, they have center stage right now to see if they can move up. First run was a 538. I think as long as the first number on that Las Vegas scoreboard up top is a three, Jim Head will probably have a smile on his face. Any questions? 3.913. 324 miles an hour. Blake Alexander just outran everybody in a funny car in Las Vegas, not named John Force. All the way up to the number two qualifying spot. That's pretty solid, Jason Galvin. Yeah, and I'm down here with Jim Head. Alan Reinhardt said if it ran in the threes, you'd probably have a smile. Well, there's the smile, and there's a big fist bump to go with it. Yeah, we needed that. I kind of fouled it up the Q1 and uh, made up for it. That was our soft run, so it looks like it's trying to run. <laughs> that was a soft run. That was a soft run. <laughs> Track temperature checking in about 122 degrees as we fire off here. The weather a little bit warmer than it was earlier. But density altitude, correction factor, has not really changed much out there on the racetrack. It is 83 beautiful degrees here at the Strip at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. 1.108 is the correction. Density altitude. Forty-six hundred and thirty-one feet. We got a pair coming at you now. Bug, bug, bug Bite thinks I should name my shark Bug Bite. Bug Bite's still around. Of course she is. There you go. Okay. I, I thought that was like a one race thing. Oh, no. No. Oh, no. Okay. When the shoe fits. All right. Set to go here with a couple of Mustangs in lanes one and two and one of those brand new Gazoo Racing Toyotas over there in lane four. Alexis DeJoria for Bandero. Rocket Phone's going to have that side of the strip at Las Vegas to herself while Jason Rupert and Steven Densham get their cars plugged in, set, and ready to go. Rupert right now sitting in the number 15 spot. Densham, if you recall, shut off after the burnout in qualifying session number one. I went down and talked to Gary in between rounds said, what happened? He said it simply twisted the oil pump shaft. 
said, could you find a reason for it? And he said, no. Normally, when you have a situation like that, you'll find a little piece of debris, something caught in the pump that'll lock the pump up and turn the shaft in, in half. But he said, couldn't find anything wrong with it. They've got the shaft replaced, and they're ready to rock. Signal goes out to fire them up. The bump spot you see down there on the scoreboard, 1189. That is Terry Haddock's number. Not exactly the most intimidating number in the world, but since Gary Dencham has, or Stephen Dencham, excuse me, has not yet made a run, he is not yet qualified for the field. Second half of last year, Alan, as you know, Alexis DeJoria really came into her own. That whole team really gelled. They got some wins. Factored into the championship by taking out Matt Hagen. And now the GR Supra body on the car. That thing is going to perform very well once they get used to it. It's just about finding that sweet spot. But uh, my eyes are on Alexis this year as a breakout. She's had success here in Vegas a couple of times. This is a happy place for her. Bandero Premium Tequila, Rocket Phones, as you uh, always talk about. This will be a perfect place for them to break out. Now, right now, she needs to do basically what Blake Alexander just did, and that's go down and get the baseline run after they didn't make it down in the first qualifying session. I think having four makes everybody feel a little bit better about that. And for those who may be wondering, part of the reason that there are four qualifying sessions is because that there are four lanes here. And they want to give all the competitors an opportunity to have at least one shot at each lane before you get into eliminations. In a perfect world, you wouldn't want to have to go into round number one of eliminations being in a lane that you've never made a run in. So that's where we're at right now. Jason Rupert trying to move up. Steven Dencham trying to move in. Alexis Joria looking for that three-second zone. Parachute out for Dencham. 396 for Alexis, and something's flying around down there at the top. And what is that? We. I think that was a hatch off the hood of the car. Alexis DeJoria goes 3.961, 322 miles an hour. Something goes sailing through the sky down there at the other end. Jason Rupert goes 412 at 309. Dencham goes 421 at 267. So for the moment, Dencham in the field in the number 16 spot. And, yeah, it looks like it was the hood panel. And we'll take another look at that in a second. First, let's go to the starting line. And we're down here with uh, Del Worsham. He's taking a look up there watching Stephen Densham's car. But Alexis's car goes down. It goes 396. How do you think that compares to what we'll see the rest of the session? Uh, you definitely probably going to see runs. Uh, we, last session we saw runs quicker than that, so I'm sure we will again. But... Not getting down the first the first run definitely definitely made us nervous. So we needed a good run down the track. So tomorrow we can try to improve our position and do well. And I really wish that was our first run, not you know that bad run. So once once in a while, it's got to lay up a little bit and do what you got to do. But for uh, for Bandera and Toyota and all of our family, everybody's here. It's a good run down the track, and uh, hopefully that'll be something to shoot for uh, as far as qualifying goes. Watch this again on the NHRA.tv replay. Watch all the way on the left side of the screen. Alexis makes a good solid run out there. There you see this parachute come out on Stephen Dencham's car. And as they close in on the finish line, we panel came out of the hood. Apparently, they need some 322-mile-an-hour tape. There you see the Midwest factory finishes car. They're double-checking, making sure they got all the fire out under the hood down there. And it'll be just a second before we continue on. Power Brokers, Tony Stewart in the house here this weekend. Hanging out, looking over his latest racing investment. At least I think. I'll have to check the racing websites and make sure that he hasn't bought another car or series or racetrack. Or I mean, I heard a rumor that Tony was thinking about buying Formula One, but I don't know if that went through yet or not. 
And over there in lane number four, KGC, Kindness General Contract. That is the Big Jim Dunn car. They run a lot of artwork throughout the course of the season as they rotate major sponsors on that one. And I got to tell you, the red and white car really does kind of pop. Absolutely it does, Alan. That's one of their better looking cars. And happy belated birthday to Big Jim. Don't worry, all is well over there at the KGC side of the racetrack. Jim Dunn, Jim Campbell, his driver, their routine is the shortest in all of Nitro racing. And so they always let the other car start their routine first and then join. Every crew chief out there has got a number in mind of how long they want the car to run from the time they fire it up till the time they stage it up. They got five, six, maybe 10 seconds you can play with in there. But if just for instance, my number is 100 seconds and Joe's number is 60 seconds, Joe doesn't want to be sitting around waiting on me. So he just lets me start my routine first and then fires off when he knows it's time that'll put us both on the starting line when we need to be there. And they just shut off the Jim Campbell car. I don't see from here Anything that would tell me exactly what the problem was, that it backed up, and John Dunn, Big Jim's son, just did the very emphatic throat cut motion, and apparently something was dripping out of it when they backed up from the burnout. So on a solo, Matt Hagen, the most recent winner on tour, looking to move up from the number 11 spot. Kind of like that. 3.9, two, zero. Hey, Las Vegas, what do you think of the speed? 332 miles an hour. And Matt Hagen rockets his way up to the top half of the field. I mean, he's no John Forrest, but that's pretty good. 332 miles an hour and at 3.920. Hagen will put the power brokers, Dodge, in the number three position right now. So good solid run. I got to believe they're happy with that. And hopefully we can find out exactly what the problem was with Big Jim Dunn's car. Let's go down to Jason. Down here with Dickie Venables in the 392 and way up over the 330 speed mark there. That's impressive. Yeah, that's pretty good speed for us up here anyway. Uh, yeah, we just missed it big time there. Q1, it wore the clutch out and just ran slow. So that's kind of what we were shooting for. So we're pleased with that. Car was definitely thundering. Here's the replay up there on NHRA.TV, Sunoco Vision. I can't believe Dickie Venables came up here shy in qualifying session number one and blew through the clutch. He is normally not a shy guy. Nice looking run down there for the power brokers. Word from the Campbell pit is that the car was in neutral. These cars will over center go in neutral. If it goes into neutral, you are not, absolutely not, getting it back and forward. And that's what happened down there, so it cost him the qualifying run. Well, this time we got three of them to shoot at you. And three pretty good ones. Robert Knight, the Auto Club, Southern California, Chevrolet, lane number one. J.R. Todd, the DHL, CMR. Yazoo, Toyota, lane number two. And Ron Capps. Napa Auto Parts. Dodge over there in lane number three. Gear wrench et al. The new Ron Caps Motorsports. I was walking through the pits. I saw Ron packing a parachute. I said, dude, don't you have people that do that? He said, well, I've always done this. And I said, yeah, but you used to be a driver. You're an owner now. I never saw Don Schumacher packing a parachute. He said, he did when he was driving the car. It's actually interesting. A, a big number of the drivers will pack their own parachutes for the simple reason that they want to make darn sure it's done right. And if you do it yourself, you don't have to worry about it. Absolutely. Got the visor cam on J.R. Todd again this week. Those people who are watching on NHRA.TV just got a view from inside the new GR Supra. And they made a big deal about how much easier it is to see out of that car, and we just got a great view of it. Robert Height winning the first two races of the season. Very, very strong. And of course, Caps, he's just the reigning champ. This should be good. Hands up on two lanes. Now the third one's ready to go. One ship, one Toyota, 
one down. Of it, 393 Robert Height, 394 J.R. Todd, 704 Ron Caps after he smoked the tires in the early part of the run. Ron will stand on his earlier run. He's number five. Robert Height up to number six at 393. J.R. Todd is now number eight. And all of a sudden, if you want to be in the quick half of the field, you got to run better than 3.9. Four, three. Getting a little more difficult to sneak up there into the top half. Good to see the yellow fellas getting down the racetrack. It's obviously better when they are at full strength, and that is a solid run. Robert Height, of course, so strong here at the start of the season. That's what they're all about. 93 with one, 327 big speed, and Caps driving into smoke. Let's check out the replay up on Sunoco Vision. Right there in the middle of your screen, you see the GR Supra of J.R. Todd. Caps drives into smoke, clicks it off. Oh, that's a fun one. Robert and JR. Whole bunch of championships between them. Toyota and Chevrolet side by side. And that'll bring us our final quad. It's going to be John Force. Number one qualifier, lane number one. Blue Death. Peak, Annie Freeze and Coolant. Chevrolet, lane number two. Levi, Ray and Shop, Tim Wilkerson. For Summit Racing Equipment, Curry Transportation, Diversified Yacht, in lane number three, BG, Bob Tasca the third in his motorcraft, Ford Mustang. And in lane number four, it's Bruce Pendragon, the Snap-on Makers and Fixers Edition. Folks at Russell's Moving and Storage back on the spill plates on the side of his Hellcat. into the season so far that's had a more up and down year than John Force? No. No, that's an excellent point. Force, you know, in the test he runs an 83 and then Pomona he's a nightmare and then just uh, up and down for her. the greatest of all time. But right now he's up. He's sitting on number one. They certainly made a great run out there in the first session with that 3.887. John Force in the number one spot in lane number one. Tim Wilkerson. 397 in the first session. That's not even good for top half of the field anymore. Bob Tasker currently sits fourth. The guy who left here with the trophy when we were here a year ago. And Cruz Pedregon, he's 3.940, has got him in the number seven spot. BT3 was fired up in between rounds. Super happy about that run. That was the run that they needed all season long. Of course, the weather in Gainesville put everybody behind. They really needed the runs, he said. This is where they want to be. That 93 in the first qualifying session, or the 92 at 331. Had them all smiles in the task of pit. They've definitely taken a little pressure off for the weekend when you come right out of the box and put a good solid run on the board. So John, Tim, Bob, Crew, final four funny cars, top fuel at the ready line. Get down this time, couple of pedals, and wow, we got smoke and shut off and 395 for Bob Tasca. He's the only one that made a decent run out there. Cruz Pedregon goes 408, shutting off early. John Force ends up with a 545. And Tim Wilkerson didn't get the run he was looking for either at 417. So we take a look back at the early numbers, and I think the only one's going to be happy out of the whole bunch is going to be Bob Tasca, the third. John Force, number one. Blake Alexander, best run of the session, two. Matt Hagen, three. Tasca, four. Caps, height. Cruz, JR, your quick eight. Here's Amanda, top end of the racetrack from NHRA on Fox. JR, after three races into the season, we kick off this fourth race of the year. Where would you say this program is for you at this moment? Uh, I know it's hard to believe, but uh, you know, it's the AHL team. We're pretty much a new team, a lot of new crew guys, and even the, uh, the experienced guys that we have, we have them in new positions, so it's like a new team. We're just uh, creeping up on it. Todd and Jono, uh, they're getting a handle on this new uh, Toyota GR Supra. I mean, it's not like you just bolt this thing on and uh, go out there and start kicking everybody's ass. That's what, what we hope we do, but uh, it takes time, and we're getting it figured out. And we got some guests from Clean Harbor, Safety Clean. Want to say hello to them, and it's nice to be here in Vegas going for a while. We've had success here in the past, so hopefully we can put this uh, Toyota GR Super in the winter circle this weekend. I don't think there's any doubt that there's a little uh, internal Toyota competition to be the first one 
in the winner's circle. Top fuel at the ready line. Safety Safari clearing off the top end of the racetrack. We had to get ready to fire up. Jim Maroney, the American Flow Tech team out of Phoenix. Lane number one, Sean Langdon. And lane number two, that's the DHL machine out of Coletta Motorsports. Lane number three, Cam Ferre. And he is driving Terry Haddock's top fuel car. Now, Cameron did not make the first session, so he is not yet on the sheet. JR Todd, or I'm sorry, Sean Langdon. I get my DHL guys mixed up. Sean Langdon had a problem with the car. First, it wouldn't start. Then they got it started and could not disengage the starter, so he has not made a run yet. Jim Maroney did make an early shutoff run in the first session. It was 469. Looking to move up from there, Jim Maroney told me in between rounds that he is working on a new clutch program. He said, basically, they bought everything that Bill Miller had, including clutches, including discs, including stuff, including tools, Bill Miller, who has been threatening to retire for, well, a while, uh, apparently finally did. Sold off all his equipment, and we're certainly going to miss the cat in the yellow hat out here on the NHRA trail. But Jim Maroney trying to take some of that equipment and better his program. For Sean Langdon, I really believe that those guys need to have, you know, whatever you got to do to run the evil spirits out of there. You know, get get an Indian chief over there or something and see if they can make that happen. And Cam Ferre just looking for a clean run down the racetrack to put himself on the ladder. That's a new car for Terry Haddock. He wants to show the world that they've got a car that is capable of qualifying here in the NHRA Big Show. Called Cam to get the car out here this weekend. Cam had a deal with Todd Payton all set up for the year. Sponsorship fell through. So Cam, so close to being out here on a semi-regular basis, doing well. His wife is out here running in the Lucas Oil Series. So Cam is out here making some runs. New Aerodyne wings, new injector. A lot of new current technology on Terry Haddock's machine. Wants to show people out there who want to go top fuel racing. This is a viable car that can qualify. Shuts it off early on that one. 384 for Sean Langdon. 314 miles an hour. That's the baseline run that they would have loved to have in the first session. Jim Maroney goes 419 at 225 miles an hour. As they just continue to kind of sneak up on a little bit. Cam's car went out there, kind of rattled. I'm not sure if it popped or not, but you saw the parachute come out a little bit early. We'll take another look at that one after we hear from Jason on the starting line. Down here with Kurt Elliott with Sean Langdon's team. And, Kurt, you guys get a baseline run in there. What happened on the first run? Uh, we had a starter malfunction, and uh, that just ruined our whole run, basically. But uh, we dropped a hole down there. That's why it only ran an 84. But we get this monkey off our Act, this car is going to run good, guarantee you. They certainly have got everything they need over there to make one run good, including six decades of experience from a team owner as we take another look. Yep, there you can see the cylinder out well before the eighth mile mark. Puffing a lot of raw liquid out of the pipe. These cars run such a tremendous volume of fuel through them that sometimes it literally just drowns out the spark plugs. And when that happens, you can see the raw fuel being pumped out of the pipe. For those of you that are casual fans, think about this. Nitro is not an overly powerful fuel, but it contains its own oxygen. And the way these cars make power is by burning so much of it. If you look down on the racetrack, the first orange block out there is 330 feet from the starting line. Now, never mind the burnout, backing up, all of that stuff. Once a car stays from the time the tree flashes yellow, when the driver hits the gas, 
and goes past that first orange block. It has burned two gallons of fuel. Two gallons to cover the length of a football field from a standing start. And if you think gasoline's expensive right now, and it is, just be glad your car doesn't run on nitro. Lane number one, Clay Milliken, the Parts Plus Summit Racing Equipment Team. Lane number three, Montana brand, Rocky Mountain Twist. That is Austin Proc. And lane number four, code free, Leah, the Dodge Power Brokers machine. That is the other half of the Tony Stewart Nitro Experiment here in NHRA. Spoke with Clay Milliken in between rounds, talked a little bit about the crew chief change over there, and he reminded me that Jim Oberhofer has done a stint with this team in the past. When Mike Lober had originally come over, Jimmo was an assistant to kind of work out all the electrical systems and the wiring and all the safety systems. Uh, and now Jimmo is kind of back. And Clay looks at it like a timing situation. Jimmo leaving Paul Lee's team, Paul Lee bringing in new crew chiefs, and the availability to come back and work with the Parts Plus team, that was a planned shutoff in the first run, so look for them to step on it. They also are going to make another crew chief announcement coming in the upcoming days. They've got uh, another addition coming to that team. Not for Austin early, and they shut it off, shut Clay off as well. 3.741, 326 miles an hour for Leah. And I do believe they have officially put Gainesville behind them. Leah goes to the top with that code free associates machine at 3.741. Austin had a hole out early, goes 459, 172, shutting off before the eighth, and a 399 for Clay Milliken at only 235 miles an hour as we go down once again to Jason. Neil Strasbaugh is down here, a great run, and that gallon just said, I think Gainesville's off your back. Yeah, no, we were, we were excited to get away from that uh, that storm down there anyway. So, yeah, no, it's a little little new for me, you know, at altitude, and we haven't been on track this hot this yet, this year, so it's uh, we're picking away at it. Take another look at this, Neil. See what you think. You're going to see a cylinder out for Austin right there. He'll shut it off about 300 feet. Wow, two cylinders out at 300 feet. Clay was out of gas about, oh, 700 feet or so. Still ran into threes. But didn't look like a whole lot of lost motion out there for Leah. The Code 3 Associates car goes to the top. Now we'll find out how long. She can stay there. Oh, I like to see that for Neil Strasbaugh, Tony Stewart, and, of course, Leah. They have had a just a very tough last year or so to put together great back-to-back -back runs, take over the top spot. Team is definitely pointed in the right direction. And now we got four of them getting ready to come at you, starting with Tony Schumacher in lane number one. Justin Ashley in lane number two. Steve-O to champ in lane number three. And Brittany Force, the Monster Energy car in lane number four. Let's see, we've got the winningest driver in top fuel history in lane number one. We've got certainly one of the hottest drivers here at the beginning of the 2022 season in lane number two. We've got the hottest car the last four consecutive years in our all championship year in lane number three. And we got Brittany over there in lane number four, that Monster Energy team, and they make a living qualifying number one week in and week out. This could very easily be a final round. Yeah, super exciting. You got Torrance there, has won six of the seven four wide races, and they call him King of the Quad or Captain Quattro or anything that kind of rhymes with quad. They're calling this guy, and Steve has just really risen to the top in the last four years in general, but especially at the four wide. Now, he's the number 14 qualifier right now, but they're looking to step up. And of course, Tony Schumacher being back. What drag racing fan isn't happy to see Tony Schumacher back on the track as opposed to being on the sidelines? Tony Schumacher with backing of the Menard family and Skag Equipment. Phillips Connect, if you run trucks up and down the road, you better know who they are, and if you don't, figure it out. <laughs> to the stripe we go, 376, Torrance. 
324 miles an hour. Justin Ashley goes 392. Tony Schumacher goes 395. Brittany was off the gas pretty early at 534. But that's going to slide Steve O up towards the top of the heap. Not on the top of the heap, but he's made a move in the right direction as we go down the starting line one more time. And here with Bobby Lagana taking a look down the track. How difficult is it when we've run in cool air all year to run in this? That's drag racing. Life is way more difficult than that. We've lost a close friend, and Dylan Cromwell's parents are here, and uh, it's definitely hard not to break a tear when they came by to pit the other day. And, uh, you know, just, you know, I got a thing here. It just says, don't ever give up. And, uh, you know, his parents are, and his brother are wonderful, beautiful people. And, you know, and our friend Steve Arita, his family's watching at home. Uh, he just says, uh, load the you-know-what up, so... Giving Brittany a boost up there on the top end of the racetrack. Steve Torrance goes to number three position behind Doug Coletta, who was low ET of the first session, and Leah, who is low ET of the day so far. But here comes our final qualifier. You've got a bad reputation. According to who? You, yeah. Evan just said it. People couldn't hear it. But everyone, he said everyone. Just so you know, I was acquitted for most of it. Okay. Well, that's good. That's good. Charges aren't convictions. That's a good point. Thank goodness. Here we go. Lane number one. Rolling in here right now. Mike Salinas. Adams Pool, Scrappers at Team Car. Lane number three, it's going to be Antron Brown, three-time champ for Matco Tool, Sirius XM, Hanks to first. Antron, the new team owner. And over there in lane number four, Doug Coletta, the Mac Tool, CMR, Construction and Roofing, Revkin, Coletta Motorsport, DHL, Toyota, yada, 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 yada. You know what I missed when they did the Toyota you know, Toyota did their uh, horsepower hangover thing. I think, picture this. Doug Coletta instead of Antron Brown. Oh my goodness, that's genius. I don't think people could handle it. Like Antron, I think Doug would be too much. You know, it's funny, we actually talked about that. The Toyota drivers were all at the press luncheon yesterday. And one of the things they brought up was, you know, just how much fun they had making that and, and Toyota getting so involved with it. 
And Antron said the beauty of it is that they just kind of let us be ourselves. You know, they let us just kind of let our personality show. And I said, so you're telling me that the white feathered headdress, that's your personality? And Jr. piped right up and he said, oh, yeah, as a matter of fact, he brought that with him. Who knew? Who knew? Doug Coletta, lane number one. Antron. Or I'm sorry, Doug Coletta, lane number four. Antron, lane number three. Mike Salinas, lane number one. This is going to put a wrap on top fuel qualifying. We got jet cars under the arch. That's right, jet cars, baby. But right now, top fuel. Comp eliminator, top sportsman. Need you to the lanes, please. Comp top sportsman to the lanes. Salinas smokes the tires. 377 Coletta, 378 Antron Brown. Salinas goes 522, and Leah's going to retain the top spot. 3.771, 323. Solid run for Doug. 378, 325 for Antron. But Leah is going to pick up the three points. Code three is in. Give me three points for being low ET of the session. And they will head back to the hotel tonight as the number one qualifier. Hey, race fans, jet cars pulling under the arch. Don't head out just yet. You are about to see a couple of.